Hello everybody. I don't know how many people are out there. I'm John Golestan. Very, very pleased to be here to introduce to you a very small portion, a drop of the ocean of the music uh, in all dimensions. Of course, that it's impossible to do right with 45 minutes to introduce or 2,000 years of music and culture or beyond. So, what we are going to do is just read quickly review the structure, a little bit differences between the classical Western and classical Eastern, especially Persian music. Uh, I had in mind to go first, we have the first slide, please, to go first to give you some ideas uh, the basics of at least minimum uh, information we need to have to understand what the sound is and what's uh, hearing all about. Um, we might still do that uh, quickly though. The sound is really a vibration in the air. Um, the molecules of air do not travel. We do not know how it happens. It's an energy that starts from somewhere up here, comes either to your vocal cord or to your motor uh, extremities. Somehow, this energy transfers to mechanic, mechanic transfers to the air, it, it travels somehow to the air. Uh, it's not linear, unlike we write it up here as a wave. It's actually spheric. Boom! Goes all, 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 over, all the way, all around us. As a matter of fact, the first sound of the Big Bang still is around, and they can observe it. Uh, in the old days that we had the old TVs, those black and white, I don't know if you guys are old enough to even remember that, sound that would come is the background of the Big Bang in the space that we are still getting it from um, many, many billion years ago. Having that in mind, at least we need to know the frequency is one of the basic uh, characteristics of sound. Frequency is how many cycles we are moving this, we are disturbing this media, whatever it is, in our case being air. And that's very important because that creates different feelings, what we call pitch. The higher the frequency, the higher the pitch. For example, here is much higher than this one. So and, or that one was higher than this one. These are difference in pitch. You can make the difference in how strong the, the sound is, like if I'm talking loud or very soft. That would be the loudness, that's the amplitude, and then how long the sound remains on the air. Can we go to the next slide, please, quick? Which one that is? We can bypass this one. I mean, we've talked about this because of the time, since we have a time limit now. Let's bypass this one also. This was just showing the molecules. Now, this is the wave for a sound that is low amplitude, and low frequency. Next slide, please. This one is, of course, higher amplitude, and also more cycles for the same unit of time, which is usually uh, hertz, which is how many frequency pitch is second we have. Next one, please. Now, playing one sound would not create any musical understanding or feeling. It just gives you rhythm, like, Same sound with different duration, with different shape uh, and, and amplitude, would not give you any uh, pleasurable feeling. Interestingly, people believe that music was before language, which was in the nature and all around the, the human as we were 10,000 years ago, starting to evolve to what we are today gradually. And at that sense, um, we are trying to probably imitate the sounds that are around us to begin with. We were talking about 10,000 years ago. And with that, music and rhythm comes first, naturally. That's why we are thinking it was before. But it's very interesting that both music and language are very, very, very cultural dependent and local dependent. And that is when you're born, 
the hardware is there, there's no software, but, but you need to reprogram this to get the code of the sound you're hearing. And the first two years, you're all hearing, hearing, and all the babies are just listening. And then they start practicing with the words, and then just making this vocal cord move the air makes sense, sensible. But you need to have the coding, and then when you hear that again, then it's decoded and gives you the meaning that you already put together in your brain. That's a very complex scenario there. The language is exactly like music. For example, I give a lot of show we got Kelly Koshan Ali. Kelly Koshan came to ask them. Probably none of you understand what I said. I'm using the same technique to transfer the sound to you. But because the coding and the coding is not there, you might enjoy or disenjoy what you just heard, but you would not get any feeling or message out of it. Music is pretty much like that. Although it's an international language in one sense, very much like language is very local. And if you're not tuned to it and get the code in place, when you hear it again, you cannot decode it, as well as a, a, a native. And that's why, the, since Western, uh, from probably 16th century, 15th century, that the Western classical music started developing to the, to the today what it is today. Beautiful. Uh, but if you're tuned to all those intervals that you constantly hear, and especially if you're very uh, sensitive and your into intonation is to perfect pitch, when you hear a, a foreign piece and if they are not using that perfect pitch scale, then it might look nice to you or not nice, but it does not sit down as a message or as a feeling as a native would. Absolutely. And that's why I'm here today, to show you what other scales we use that uh, is outside of what you are used to. So, uh, some part of this to, to, to tunes that you're hearing is totally out of tune for you, because your ear since childhood has grown into perfect pitch, and, and something that's outside it, it's a little bit different. Having said that, uh, performed, been performed in many different stages, the, back, the feedback that I get is that it's nice. At least they don't, they don't come and say, I'm going to run away from this. That's very interesting, but it could happen, you know, have to be careful with it. Next slide would tell you how the sound that we talked about travel to the ear, and I want you to, to see how complex is this. Go please, next one. Vocal cords move, a thought comes, an energy, and this is all transfer of energy from one thought to another thought. And this transfer is very, very complex and beautiful, beautiful in nature. Suppose that your vocal cord is moving the air and it comes to your ear, where does it happen next, please? That's a pretty Yes. It goes through the ear canal. The wave and energy of wave turns to mechanic again. It moves the membrane, three little bones in the middle ear, moves to another membrane inside what's called the cochlea, which is a foiled um, piece of engineering. If you open that up, next slide please you would see, like the key of the piano, there is a membrane called basal membrane in that coil that is sensitive to the different frequencies, to the higher frequency at the door, and as you go in and in and in, the lower frequencies. So this is like if you have this device in your ear, and then the fluid inside this coil starts vibrating. It vibrates different part of this, and then, next time please, and you cut, and you cut that, see what, what's happening in there. That's the basal membrane right there. And the cells are sitting there. There are some uh, projections of the cells out. And if the membrane moves, they get stimulated, and the message goes as a neural input with the, uh, electrical charge and chemi chemical uh, bounds uh, and bridges and distributes all over the brain, and that's what you call we understand this energy transferred somehow to you and now it translated to your energy hopefully when I say red which you hear and you imagine is really the same red that I am referring to 
that's a very special dialogue is what we call, is it the same? Is the listener really on the same page that I am? And that needs to be all in the childhood that you come up. It needs to be coded so you can decode it. If you don't have that code, it's not going to be coded. Next, please. Okay, so what we hear, the range of human hearing, the whole electromagnetic range from zero. Could you go to the next slide first? Then I can get back to this. From zero all the way to gamma rays, it starts to the range that we can. First of all, this range is from 5 to 15, it's vibration that you feel. From 20 to 20,000, this device picks it up. Then there is a gap from there. We can't, we cannot communicate with whatever is out there because we don't have the device. Until it gets to 10 to the power of 12, which is called tetahertz, and in that 450 to 750 is, is the visible, which this device picks it up. They all transfers to electrochemical messages and goes all over the brain, and then the brain sitting up there with these three small pieces of whatever is out there, projects and guesses what is really going out there. And this is what we constantly are getting these inputs, and the brain guess and puts best guess out, projects out there. That's very interesting. But the amount of, of the visible or, or audible or touchable brown bound is very, very limited. And so, therefore, we don't really know what's outside us. What is, what is, we believe that is outside us is what this creates based on what the information it gets, which is very limited. Next, please. Now, uh, there is eight nodes in uh, musical scales of the Western culture. Um, in the Europe, they call it do, re, mi, fa, so, let's say, do. Here, you start with A, B, C, D, but they're equivalent of the same frequencies. Uh, next, please. Now I need your imagination. Instead of reading the notes on the paper in 2D, you are going to create a 3D experience of the scale. Every scale has a special structure that we are going to review. And then you imagine in this room that you're sitting, next please, there are four notes that are always the same, as soon as you pick number one, as what frequency is your no, no, number one, in every scale, number four, number five, and number eight out of the eight nodes are always fixed. You cannot change that. Always fixed, no matter what mode you're playing, no matter what scale you're playing, those four, it's like, a, like columns that hold the, the room up. So I want you to imagine, one is behind you right in that corner, four, five, and eight is there. So this four is already fixed. There is two more notes, depends on where you choose it on that wall, and two more notes where you choose it in this wall that gives you the different color of different modes and different things that you hear. Okay. The whole music is like that. But remember, as soon as you fix the first frequency on that note, fourth, fifth, and eighth, which are the most important notes of the scale, all the, all the chords that you hear and develop is all based on fourth, fifth, and eighth. And we'll go a little bit farther than that and I'll show you. Now, interestingly, if you divide this wall to four equal parts and take one of these parts and measure the other two walls, there is 10 in that wall, 10 in this wall, in every scale. Next, please. So you have a 24 part scale. Four notes is already picked. You have nine possibilities to put notes in this wall. Nine possibilities in that wall. And depends on where you put them, you get different scales. And from now on, I'm going to give you a phone number to this scale. So if you need them, you can call them. Next one, please. The first one is called tonic. It's always the most important part in Western classical music. The fourth, fifth are called perfect. They're always fixed in that sense, and the next one is octave. Supposedly, this is 100. Let's pick a, a simple one. The frequency of number one is 100. 
That one in that corner, number four, would be 133. It's always 1.33 relative to the first one. The one on position node number five, in the position five, would be 150. Always 1.5 times this. And position number eight is 200, twice as the first node. And I'm going to show you that right now in one of the scale by the tar. Oh, by the way, then I'll introduce you the, the, the instruments also, which is history of instruments are by itself. So it's really a volume box. However, this, suppose is, this is actually 130, but let's say this is 100. Then you have... This is the basis that you're talking about. Number one, number four, number five, eight. This is the whole scale. When you come to the room number eight, then you are double frequency. Now, the building that you're making has eight stories, and every story has the same kind of whatever you pick on the notes that you want, except for those four that are already fixed. Except that as you go up, Every frequency is double. As you go down, every frequency is half. So upstairs to the to the note that you saw would be this one. The whole thing would be first one is one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Again, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. There are now two. You experience the same building, two different levels. You can go up to seven for for our hearing, which is in the piano scale. Can we go to the next? Okay, now how do we find how to to pick those the other two, or the other two in this wall, two other two on that wall? How do we do that? It's based on the what's called a, a natural frequency phenomenon. If you double the frequency of whatever your first note, let's say it was C1, was 100 supposedly. Then, when you double it, you have, instead of one wave, you have two waves. When you triple it, you have three waves, four, five, and six, and so forth. And when you do that, can we go to the next slide, please? When you do that 16 times, all the notes on the scale would show themselves in different stories of the building and then you bring them all down together then you find all the notes that creates a scale by just doubling the first tripling four five times six times seven times this is the way that you pick what other notes are there in the scale and then which one do you want to use next one please eventually when you do this through our hearing we can hear from what's called the c0 this is the seven Actually, it made it eight here, but it's really most of the instruments and orchestra use seventh story, not eight. This goes a little bit lower than what we hear in 2000, about 16. And then we actually stop somewhere around 20,000. So this is the whole note that you can get anywhere uh, with all these levels. Can we go to the next one, please? And if you put those piano and put all the notes, frequencies on top of it, that's exactly how you have all the scales made. Next, please. So, there's another element about sensitivity I'm going to bypass because we had some technical issues at the beginning that we have low, less time to play uh, for you. Um, but just to understand that it, you can divide this to 24 equal pieces and then pick either two notes in this, whichever you want, two notes in that, whichever you want, and try. And whichever feels better, you keep it. Whichever doesn't feel good, you throw it away. So uh, one of the uh, differences in Western and Eastern is that you have 12, which each two of them are put together as the smallest amount that exists in Western. For us, 
each one of them exists. So we have 24, scale of 24, but you guys have uh, Western uh, countries follow a scale of 12 nodes among the same thing. So you divide the whole area by 12, we divide it by 24. So we have some nodes in between those nodes that you're, you're, you're not using. So it gives more possible colorful creations. Uh, but again, if you're not tuned to it and you don't have the, the coding, it's going to be hard to decode it again. You, you get the message or feeling. So how we get to this is really, if you pay attention to what's the smallest sound that you can hear the difference, like this. Sorry. If you can hear the difference between these two, just by moving my finger a little bit higher, I can increase the tension and change the frequency. You can hear those two. That's what we usually refer to as the smallest amount, which is in SOAR, uh, is about 0.5. In, in coma is five, coma which is uh, one uh, almost about ten so far, ten times of. If they put a, a person in the in the lab and try to see what's the sensitivity of of the frequency you have, is a thousand over one thousand and one, and log of that is zero point zero four, and that is the unit for for so far for the from France created that unit for the sensitivity of the hear. For the music part, our sensitivity is one-tenth of that, and it's called you know, five comma. So if you divide the whole area from one to eight, there's going to be 301 savoir, 301 pieces that you can differentiate from each other. Now, in that 301, you can divide it by 12. You are going to get 25 equal Western classical scales. You can divide it by 24, you get 12 and a half almost, because we don't even follow that that much closely. <laughs> That's a little bit different than in practice. We don't, we're not staying on that 12 and a half, so on. But that's, the diff that's one of the major differences. Next, please. So what's in red is, is what we can use in, uh, in Eastern classical music, and the Western classical music does not have it. And you all have half notes. Uh, which, are, which are the difference between the two um, keys in the piano, black and white, black and white. And then you have whole notes, and you have one and a half notes, which would be like, that's half, that I have this, you don't have, that's full, that's one and a half. But for us, we have actually uh, some sounds between those half steps. Understood? Good, thank you. That's the hardest part to explain, really. <laughs> Very hard to explain. Uh, but that's the easiest way I could create. And go to the next slide, please. Now, from now on, you're going to have more of the scales to play and show you what they are. If you pick the other two notes on the left side on that wall, such that there is four unit, four unit, two unit. This one is always four. We talked about four and five always fixed. And then on the other side, exactly like that, 442. 442. Then you're in a major scale. And that sounds something like this. Or, depends on which floor are you on. One floor higher, one floor lower. The same frequencies. You can feel that they are all the same. So, here, for us, it is actually, we call it major or mahu, uh, and I can play a little bit on mahu for you. Uh, but before I do that, I want to show you some other differences. The second difference is that, amazingly, the Western classical music is developed based on play. It's like every note there is a character in a theater. And every, every one of them has their own role. There is a teacher, there is a doctor, there is a student, there is a worker. And they, they remain, they hold that character throughout. And that's the way they relay the message, by playing their roles. 
So the, the first note is very important, then the fifth note, and the fourth note, and the eighth note, next important, and so forth. And then when you're done with listening to a piece of classical music, then you're done with uh, seeing like it's like a play in front of you. Every, every note did their own job. That's not the case for us. First of all, our scales are based on four notes or five notes. And combination of four and five, like one, two, three, four, and then the remaining would be one, two, three, four, five, from one to four, and that. Uh, and then we can use combination of different fives and different fours and mix and match it. And when you do that, you get several different form of scales that creates different mood ambience that it does not exist in, in listening classical music. So if I play for your mahur, the note that's not number one, that's the bass, plays a little bit, does its job in a piece, we call it dung. You're playing that dong or my bomb. When you're done with that dong or my bomb, then it transfers its importance to the next note, goes to the second note of the scale. Then that becomes important. It plays, 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 creates its own environment, then passes it to the third one, to the fourth one, to the fifth one, and goes all along to the, to the last one, which usually we call O. Now, another difference is that all of the music in Western culture is based on fixed beats. You have measures of different beats. But we don't. And most of our music is actually as our voice, which is, uh, is, is a beat free. And that remains the most important part of my understanding of the music in Persian. Because then it gives the player pleasure of playing it differently each time. Because you can now, there's no measure, you can actually increase some of notes, decrease some of notes, and create different. So many different versions of the same thing. And as, that's why we have about 288 of these little pieces of what we call gong, of four notes or five notes, throughout the centuries, which was put together 100 years ago to five or six different systems, which I'm going to show you right now. But then each time, you use that as a, as a base, and then you can change it. And that's so beautiful. From 288 pieces, like a brick uh, or, uh, and cement and so forth, you make a different building. Each time, it feels different and sounds a little different. So that's the last part. Having said that, I'm going to play you a few things in Mahur. Uh, and I pass from the torch from the first one to the second one to the fourth and fifth one, just as an example. This, this is how or major scale, but real more would sound. <laughs> to the second note. Now instead of this note being being the, uh, the magnet and absorb all the other ones to itself to, to be the most important note, now we are going to give it to the second note. See how it differs. I play first one first and then go to the second one again. somewhere else. And then to show that you're still in the same scale, they use what we call an ending figure that fixes throughout this, this system that I'm playing and it brings you back to the base and say, hey, you're still here 
and then let it go to the next one. And then you play there, and they come back, hey, we are still. And then that is the end like this. <laughs> Now we're back into the first note. You understand the difference here and here? Now you can go actually now to, let's say go to the, to the fifth note, suddenly. knows that you can stay there and play as long as you want and then you come back to, to the bass. Say, yeah, I'm still here. That's the, three, that's the end figure that brings you to the bass. And suddenly, out of all this beautiful tune to your ear note, comes something unexpectedly. Suddenly, the third note changes quarter note down. One quarter step down. And that would be... suddenly it takes you somewhere else. And if you're not tuned to this note, some, sometimes it doesn't sit right here, here. You say, oh, there's something was wrong. It was out. But it's, it's not out for us. It's out for the ears who are not really trained to be this to, to begin with. So that happens several times, actually, through the same major in different places. Suddenly, one note changes again. That creates a new color, and that gives you more, more tools to work with when you're creating something. Uh, and then it goes through, and then the last part probably comes back to eight, and that sounds something like this. <laughs> singer sings uh, some measure tunes and then you have to then play measure for example Thank <laughs> you. 
comes out. So this is major. Let's go to another scale, please. How much time is that? Okay, good. So we talked about this one. Now minor scale, same one, four, five, and eight. The other two notes, the only thing you're doing instead of it was four, four, two, now you bring it two in the middle. Make it four, two, four in that wall. And the other one would be two, four, four. So that scale would turn out to be something like this. That should be four, two, four. It's a minor scale. However, don't be going to bypass this because you have heard enough minor scale in this in classical music. Let me show you some more of a Persian format of that. Now, if you go to the left side, again, let's say minor scale. Remember, the other side was 244, four, and that's always for this wall. In that wall, you just move one note. Instead of making it 424, four, just move one in the middle. Make it 334. Three, four. Then, this is actually the mother of all of other scales in Persian music. It's known as Shu. Um, actually, let me play Shu for you. It's Samsur. So you hear a different uh, instrument also. This was tar, and what I'm going to play for you now is santur in shu. Obviously, if then you want to play any of this, you have to tune your 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 um, lines according to what notes you need, and um, that makes that's by itself a different art to do because it's not all on the full Western scale. So the shu would sound something like this. Here, the, note, the starting note is this note. Three, three, four. This is the, this one. So this is the, the first part is always played in this four notes, as we talked about. So like this. actually five different form of shur. Uh, we, we call it different awas and it depends on which one of these notes you pick to become your major player. I'm going to play a little bit uh, for you on, in uh, uh, Biota Torque, which the fourth note of the scale is picked to be the, the magnet, to pull everything to itself. And this is here. And this is really more rhythmic and more measured.
good. We give the torch to the next one. to that we have other and of course if I want to change 98 strings I have to tune again to play anything else but this is so sure so when I when this, this, this is sure it's sure but tar has this flexibility that you can actually change your bass and then create uh, with one probably one uh, tune uh, most of the scales so sure and Nava, oh, Nava is, it sounds the same the same scale <laughs> This is the feel of, of now. I like this 
this part myself very much. I like this skill very much. It takes me to a different world. Okay, let's go to the next, please. Oh, here is R minor. The difference, the right side of the wall is the same. Between the fourth and fifth, we always say this four. That's the same as, as your minor. Here, we get a 352, which is very, very, east. <laughs> if you listen to any Eastern classical music, uh, this is, I, I under, my understanding is, this is the Western ear understanding the, the, the east, when you hear this tone, and you're all uh, very familiar with this, like this. This note is that third note from the bass. Five, three, five. The rest of it is just like mine. one is the same scale that we just played right now. Actually, Humayun would be just the, the, the gravitational note comes to, to, to that third note. That makes a totally different feeling again. rhythms than just two, 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 four, or three, four, or six, four. The special one that we have, and, and I've never heard it anywhere else in the world that I listen, it's very, very Persian, is a form of a six, eight, but it's a broken six, eight. That they say, when the drum plays this, along with one of the instruments, even stone comes to dance. It's very energetic, and it makes something move inside you. And that part of the rhythm, I'm going to play something on that for you right now. 
Three five two, but then you copy this to the other one. If you do this, this, the feeling again is totally different when you put. Thank you. 
turn to the bass. This is different form of Chaga. It has a little bit more of energy of um, more energy than the other skills that we have, pretty much. And the last but not the least is when you have <laughs> this one has three of three portions there, three, three, and three. And this one is very, very, very weird to to intone the, to the Western music. This is the most foreign that you can hear anywhere, probably. And I play this uh, last because I want this to remain in your mind so you get a headache when you go home. Ready? <laughs> no, just kidding. Ready? slide that shows you um, in summary. So the scales that you can make by using just half notes, which is two of the quarter notes, would be either two, 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 and you go up. Uh, that would be chromatic. You can use whole notes, which all of them are four, 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 four. Then you can have six of those to become 24. In blues, they use six two two six four. In major scale, is four two four four two. These are all I call it four numbers for the systems. And in minor, is four two four 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 two. And in this building that you're making each room of that, when you make the first room, the second floor, third floor, as you go up, all the frequencies double double. As you go down to the basement, all frequencies of the same notes under each other half of the one in that floor that you're playing. Tar plays about two and a half. This plays about two and a half. So most of this, our songs are between two and a half scales. Because you use chords, uh, and with that you can really go dive into, deep, into deep into 3D, hearing three notes at the same time, they should really match each other beautifully, did not crash and cause dissonance and so forth. That's a beautiful, beautiful by itself branch of music to learn and to put chords on any note of music. Um, so you, you put that together and then give you depth 
our music, because we have quarter tones, they always crash if you want to put too much of the quote on it. So it's really very one line. Um, but the depth of it comes from the difference in, in the frequencies that we can get to create different ambience. Uh, and so uh, in that note, and the last slide should say, oh, these are our scale, they're relative to that, and we have some trees and some fives that does not exist in uh, Western classical music. And last one. So today what we did is actually building 24 equal pieces in the scale. And then based on that, we learned how Western and Eastern classical music is put in this flow by knowing that all of them, the first note of any scale, the fourth and fifth and eighth, are always fixed. You cannot change it, it's always the same as soon as you pick the first frequency for the first note. And you have two options on the left side of the wall, two options on the left side of the wall. <laughs> so when you put it, you get a different scale and different feelings. And eventually, when you put them together, please, next. Yeah, then you create a building uh, that has uh, different floors, eight different floors of the same scale as we talked about, with different frequencies double and going up. For the chords, if you use the, the 24 part, then your major scale chord would be a combination of eight and six, which sounds something like this, probably. This is a combination of 8 and 6. And then minor scale would be a 6 and 8, it's reversed. So you have to <laughs> then get, I don't have it here, but in piano you can use it, that you can put 6 and 8, it becomes minor. If you put 8 and 8 of those together, you get augmented, and it's 6 and 6 is diminished. Questions, please? And if you would like, I can tell you a little bit more about the instruments. This was just about the, the scale com comparison, uh, but the instrument by itself have a different story. It's another lecture, probably. Fine questions. Oh, this is a, can you make this big? This is the collection of all of our, our instruments. Um, Santuri already showed you. The middle ones are tar, which I, sh I showed you. Oud, uh, Robab. Those are the drums that I, I talked about. I wanted to bring one, but they didn't have, <laughs> they don't have any extra hands today. Uh, then we have uh, Robab, and then we have Kamanche. This one is Kamanche. This, this one is Kamanche. That one is Robab. So the, those, this is the collection of my favorite. And in front, they're all sitar, different form of sitar, and dotar. Some of them are dotar. They have two, two strings and so forth. And then on the right hand side, you know violin. So this is what commonly used in, in our group. And if you have time, go to YouTube and just type Persian music and classical Persian music. Because in Iran, you know, in any other country, because the, of the influence of the cultures and each other. We have now, like here, we have pop, we have jazz, we have, you know, uh, classical orchestra music, uh, like operas and things like that. But what I'm introducing to you is just one portion of it that's Persian classical music that is traditionally uh, kept alive for over 2,000 years. Well, I thank you so much, Dr. Bursa. Thank you for your time. Sure. It was a great presentation. Do you guys have any question? You good? Okay, and our thank camera. You. Okay, thank you very, guys. very much. So thank you and you guys take you care. You have your midterm <laughs> exam on Thursday. Do not forget it. All right. Okay. Take care. Thank you. Take care. Thank you. Bye bye. Have a good day. Most welcome. You think somebody is going to use this class? I think yeah, I can take this outside and do this.